Peer functions are one of the quickest ways to make your code easier to understand, but what exactly are peer functions, why do you want to use them, and most importantly, how do we actually create peer functions? We're going to cover all of that and more in this video starting now. My name's Kyle, and this is Web Dev Simplified, where I simplify the web for you, so if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, we're going to be talking about peer functions. And the first thing we need to talk about in order to understand peer functions is to actually understand what peer functions are and why they got brought about. And essentially, peer functions were brought about because of the idea of functional programming. And functional programming, the main concept of it is that you have functions in your program that are peer functions. That's essentially what functional programming is built on, is peer functions. And what a peer function is, it is a function that does not have any side effects, and it's a function that always returns the exact same thing every single time you give it the same inputs. So every single time you call this function with the same input, it always gives you the same output, and it affects nothing else outside of it. It essentially works exactly the same as a math function does. 2 plus 2, you give it the inputs 2 and 2, and it'll always return 4 no matter what. It doesn't affect anything outside of it. It's just always you give it 2 and 2, and it gives you 4. So that's a little bit of the theoretical side of what a peer function is. But the easiest way to understand a peer function is to take a look at some examples and to write some. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to jump into VS Code and start writing some peer functions. To get started, I just want to look at a very simple example of a non-peer function, essentially an in-peer function. And this is a function here, add element to array. And what it does is you just pass it an element, and it's going to append that element to the array, which is this global variable we have defined here. And we can actually use this function over here. We can just say over here, we want to add element to array. And we're just going to add four to our array because right now our array is one, two, three. And if we hit enter, you can see that's being called. And then what we can do is we can just come in here and look at our array and you can see our array is one, two, three, and four now. And so as we know, this function is working properly, but it is not a pure function. And it's breaking pretty much every rule of a pure function. But the easiest one to see is that it relies on external information. It's affecting things outside of the function because with a pure function, a function is going to take in some inputs and it's only going to operate on those inputs in order to create the output. Like I said with the math example, 2 plus 2 is 4, it only uses the inputs of 2 and 2 to get the output of 4. But this actually takes this array, which is not an input of this function, and uses that when it returns. So it actually uses something that's outside the function in order to create the return result, which means it's not a pure function because it has side effects and it actually uses things outside of it. So one easy way we can change this is we can make this accept an array. So we can just pass it in an array here. We're just going to call it a, and we're going to say a.push that element. So now what it's going to do is it's actually going to take in an array, and it's going to add an element to that array. So let's save this. Over here, it's going to clear. So we can check our array. Whoops, if I spell that correctly. And you can see it's just one, two, three right now. And if we call add element to array, we pass it in our array, and we pass it in an element, in our case, four and we actually look at our array again, you can see now our array is one, two, three, four. Our function still works. And now our function only depends on the inputs, the input of A and element. And so you may think, okay, this is a pure function, right? Because we're only taking the inputs to create the output. But again, the problem is that this actually has a side effect. It is changing the input A here. As you remember, we passed in array and we added that four element to it and it actually changed our global array variable. With a pure function, you never want to change the inputs that you're adding into the element. So here we have our inputs of our function. We can never change them in a pure function because that's a side effect. It's actually changing something outside of the function. That would be like if you did two plus two equals four, and every time you did that, it changed the number three to seven. It just doesn't work that way, so it can't work in this instance. And this is the thing that most people get wrong when they're creating pure functions. It's fairly easy to wrap your head around the idea that you shouldn't use anything that is not an input in your peer function, so you can't use any global variables, for example. But it's really hard to make sure you don't actually change your variables. You need to make sure you treat the inputs as immutable variables, essentially that they cannot change. So another way we can change this is instead of actually adding to that array, we want to just create a new array and add that element to it. And we can do that very easily using the rest operator. So we can just come in here and we can say we want to do A, which is our current array. We want to spread that over everything and add the element to the end of it. Now, if you're not familiar with this syntax, you can check out my ES6 video on rest and spread. I'm gonna link it in the cards and the description for you. But essentially what this is doing is it's taking our current array and adding a new element to it. 
but it's actually creating a brand new array to do that. And so what we need to do is we actually need to return that. So we can come in here and we can say return because it's not changing our global variable. So now if we save that and we come over here, we'll check and see our array is still one, two, three. And if we call add element to array, pass it in the array, and we pass it in four, you can see it's returning our new array, one, two, three, four. But our old array here is still exactly the same. It did not actually change this array. And now that actually makes this function here a pure function. You can see it doesn't rely on any external state. It only uses its inputs, and it doesn't actually change any of those inputs because it creates a new array instead of using the existing array and adding onto it. Another really important thing about a pure function that this actually does do correctly is that you need to make sure that when you give it the same inputs, it always returns the same things. So if we go up here and we call add element to array, it doesn't matter how many times in a row we call this function add element to array, you can see it's always returning the exact same thing. And that's perfect, that's what we want it to do. Now in general, it's pretty difficult to make a function actually do something different when you call it with the same inputs if you aren't actually doing anything with stuff outside of the inputs. So for example, in here, we're only using the inputs, so it's hard to make it actually do something different because we're always using just the inputs and nothing outside of it. But a function such as math.random, you're always going to be getting a random number every time you call this. So this is a function that even though it's using the same exact inputs, it's actually returning a different output to us each time. So if, for example, inside of here, we also appended math.random to the end of this. And now if we save this and we run add element to array with our array and the element four, you can see that it's actually giving us different return results when we call it because we're using math.random. So even though we're using only the inputs we get and we're not affecting anything outside of our function, since our function actually gives a different result every single time we call it with the same inputs, it's no longer a pure function. It has to always return the same output every time you give it the same inputs. And now you're probably thinking to yourself, why is this important? It just seems like it makes it more difficult to write our code since we have to worry about not changing our inputs, we have to worry about not affecting things outside of our function. It just seems really much more difficult to work with. But the idea of adding all of these extra constraints onto the pure functions you create is that it makes them so much easier to use. You know that every time you call add element to array, you're not affecting anything at all except for the inputs you pass in and the output you get out. You're not gonna change anything accidentally. You don't have any side effects happening. You're not gonna be changing your state. All it's doing is saying, here's something that I'm going to give you and then give me something else. Essentially, you can replace any peer function with just the actual code written out and it makes it really, really easy. You can just replace it with the output. For example, we could replace add element to array call. So we could replace this add element to array with array and four. We could essentially replace this exact code with just saying one, two, three, four. And that's the power of using these functions is you can always think of them as just a way to neatly wrap a small amount of code. And because these codes don't have any side effect, they don't have any extra stuff such as mutating the variables you pass into it, it makes them incredibly easy to test, which in my opinion is the most important part of peer functions is that you can test them so easily because you know, given this input, I should always get this output. There's no side effects you have to test. You don't have to mock anything. It's dead simple to unit test and having strong unit tested code or just tested code in general is going to make your life so much easier moving forward when you try to refactor your code in the future. Now, one downside to pure functions is that you can't affect anything outside of them, which is also one of the benefits. But the reason that this is a detriment is because it makes it very hard to do things such as calling a database, because calling a database and changing some of the records is changing something outside that function. So a pure function can't access the database, it can't access files, it can't access anything outside of it. So your code needs to have some way to interface with these other things. So you do need in pure functions in order to do those things. But I highly recommend making as much of your code as possible pure functions, just because how dead simple they are to use and how easy it makes your code to test. Only make the small things that actually need to interact with other things outside the function, make those in pure functions, but try as hard as you can to make everything else a pure function. I promise you, once you start getting into the habit of doing that, it's going to make your life so much easier. Because I can't tell you how many times I wrote code that was an in pure function, it did so many things inside of it, and then I needed to change one thing in my application. And I had to go through and change a bunch of different functions because I didn't know if something was going to break because I had all these side effects all over the place. It was just an absolute mess. I've run into that so many different times and it's so much easier when I know if I need to change a pure function, I can just change it. And everything else is just going to work since it doesn't affect anything else at all. 
And that's all there is to peer functions. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out other similar videos linked over here and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.